Hey everyone, I am back and it is finally time to take a look at DMX input in Blackout. So this lets you use your media servers to pixel map on your fixtures. Right now I have Mad Mapper going into my iPad running Blackout and then Blackout is doing the merge to allow this to happen. So what that means is I can still control the intensity, the hue, the saturation, all of that information right from Blackout. In Blackout with a click of a button on Live Plot, I can change what scene I'm controlling. So totally different effect in Mad Mapper. I can give Mad Mapper control back of the colors all with a click of a button. Here's a video of a fireplace running all on Mad Mapper. And then I can take control back and now use Mad Mapper to make the tube audio reactive. It's really amazing. The possibilities are endless. So let's take a look at how to do this. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm in Mad Mapper and I just want to start out by saying this is not a Mad Mapper tutorial, nor am I a Mad Mapper expert, and this should work with any media server. This is just getting into how you create profiles for DMX fixtures uh, that makes the most sense with Blackout. So before I get too deep into this, I just want to go over my hardware setup. I'm using a router right now to do everything, uh, but you could use a managed network switch and that would probably be better actually. Uh, but I know this router supports multicast and if you're using SACN, you need to make sure that your network hardware supports multicast because SACN is a multicast protocol. Uh, if you're using ArtNet, it's the same process. I won't be showing that off. Just pay attention to your universe offset and everything should work great. So my computer is going into the router via ethernet. My blackout iPad is using ethernet and going into the router. And then I have ethernet from my DMX node and transmitter also going into the router. So everything's just on that same network, just like that using static IP addresses. So let's take a look. I'm gonna create a new file here uh, with DMX. We're gonna open that up and we get this kind of screen. And I'm gonna navigate to fixture editor and we're gonna make a new fixture. I've already done this a couple times, so I'm going to delete our mode 120. And that's what I'm using. Uh, Titan Tube on mode 20 is kind of what we'll demo. You can make a new folder for your fixtures. I recommend that. I'm just going to go into my custom and click this plus button. We can start on RGB. It might start you on something else, but RGB is great. One and one work. And now we'll go into the advanced tab. Now let's look at our blackout profile for this fixture. If we count the channels on one pixel, which is what it's showing us right now, we count eight. So we're going to make the pixel size eight. And if it's a 16 bit profile, uh, you can change it to 16 here. Just note uh, how the channel gets absorbed. So one and two are now in there. So the way this works is we want Mad Mapper to merge over just the RGB pixels in the Titan tube. So we want Blackout to control everything else. And that way you can crossfade Mad Mapper in and out. And I'll also show you how to use DMX masters and all of that to really turn Mad Mapper off if you want Blackout to just resume control. But if you start having Mad Mapper control the other parameters, it gets really messy. So what we're going to do is just follow the profile in Blackout. So we're going to change everything except RGB to unused. And we see that RGB starts at channel 5. So unused, channel 5 is R, G, B, and then for shutter we'll make that unused. So that is our fixture. Now we can give it a name, mode 120. And then the last thing we're gonna do is it's 16 pixels in this mode. So we're gonna do a uh, 16 pixel height. And that is it. Come up here, add a new DMX fixture and in our menu search for the one we just made. And that looks good. I'm gonna make it Titan tube size. There we go. And now here's where it gets interesting. We're gonna go into preferences by hitting command comma. You can also just go mad mapper preferences. Go to DMX. Make your input universe something high like that and then just make sure you're on your correct network. This is all right for me. You can leave this all the same. And SACN is what I'm using, so there you go. I'm gonna label this 201 because that's my fixture name. And we're gonna look at our blackout patch. You will see that it's on channel or address 18, but for universe in Mad Mapper, I don't want these to conflict at all. So I'm gonna put this on universe 100. So I know it won't conflict, but then I am going to use the same patch. So 18, just like that. And I'm gonna add another one. So let me uh, bring capture over so we can see. So I'm going to add two here, just like that. And we'll label this 202. And we notice that Mad Mapper correctly guessed the address numbers because it knows how big it is. OK, so they're both on universe 100. Let's jump over to the iPad. So if we turn these Titan tubes on, we'll see that we have control, same as we always would. If we crossfade in, nothing really happens. And that's because of two things. One, we need to set up our input. So we're going to link status and click this wheel and we'll hit add new. Now, if we look back at Mad Mapper, we see we want universe 100, so that's correct. You can change it just like that, but universe 100 is correct. And we saw our Titan tubes are on universe two. 
So we're going to do that. And then we'll change this to HTTP. We're going to click save. Nothing's going to happen. That's just a UI bug right now and close out of this. Now just reflash the tubes. They still haven't taken the test pattern. Why? Because blackout is sending 100% brightness over them. So if we take this down, boom, we get our test pattern. And now as I move this around, look at that. We have full control. That's really all there is to it. If I put this over, you'll see that we get that. Oh, something I'll do pretty often is group my fixtures. So these are Titans. And then we'll grab these and put them in that group. And now I can just grab the group and put that over. So now they take both just like that. So now I want to show you some Mad Mapper tips and tricks, uh, how I control Mad Mapper using Blackout. So if I go to my control list and go to DMX, this is where that input universe really matters. So I set that as 101. And if I go to my patch in Blackout, you'll notice I patched a bunch of dimmers in universe 101. So what I can do now, since I'm in DMX, I can go add masters where... Uh, where is it? Masters. Let's go to DMX master level and we can set that on channel one. That's what I have. So now in blackout, if I go to channel one and I make that 100, boom. And you can see Mad Mapper even shows in real time what that dimmer is set as. So now you can do this for everything else. Uh, master, I usually go to DMX color. I'll set one for hue. I will set another one for saturation. DMX color, saturation. So we'll make this two. We'll make this three. And now, and if I go into blackout and I turn my saturation up, they saturate. If I go to my hue dimmer, as I bring this around, look at that. So what you can do is make a bunch of favorite. If I uh, go into live plot and select my hue, you'll notice I've made favorites that change the intensity and do everything I want them to. And you can merge this dimmer information with your other color data in your regular fixtures. So I can just grab these both and have them match colors just like that. So these are just favorites and you can just merge them together. So that's pretty cool. So back in Mad Mapper, you can also control what scene you're on by going to cues, bank, and uh, you can use next and previous. You can also have it target a specific one. So I think I had that on like channel 10 and that's how I was able to switch scenes. And now I'll go into the file I was using in the beginning just so you can see what was going on. The main thing that I wanna show you is how I did the audio reactive. And again, this is not a Mad Mapper tutorial, but I just made a simple solid color square here, added a video output, and then if we go into my group here, I just drag that on top. And then if I go into my control list and go to audio, I'm just controlling the Y axis with the audio and that has the volume bar effect. They have a couple built-in ones. Again, this is not a Mad Mapper tutorial, so you can play with that, but that's just an example. You can basically, just like how we were doing with DMX, you can make any parameter of any of these surfaces audio reactive. Um, and it's just connected to my microphone, so that's super simple. And then I had all my scenes here, so you can click that, that was the square. And I was doing just a simple color chase with the hue dimmer um, in blackout. So that's how it was doing the multicolor in the beginning. Here's a fireplace video. So for this one, I, in blackout, uh, just had the saturation go to zero. And that's how we were getting that output. So anyway, hopefully this helped. And uh, let me know if you have any questions.